Welcome to Bonus Issues. This is our digital extra to The Issue Is, and we've got a great panel with us this week. Lauren Steiner, one of the top progressives in Southern California, one of the main Bernie Kratz out there. She's the host of the Robust Opposition Online. Uh, Brian Goldsmith, who is the co-host of Katie Couric's podcast, which I'm jealous because I love Katie Couric. Uh, <laughs> also, he is uh, formerly of Yahoo and CBS News. Uh, he was the man behind the Sarah Palin interview. Pretty interesting uh, yeah. story there. Well, I can't I keep a job. Story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we also got Shirley Hussars here, who was one of the top uh, Trump delegates at yes. the Republican National mm -hmm. Committee, and he, she is uh, the CEO of UrbanGameChangers.com. Great to have you all here. Thank you. Um, let's pick up on a, on a discussion that we just had real quick at the end of the TV version, which is what's happening at USC. You got President Max Nikias um, calls for him to resign from the Academic Senate from. Uh, students there because there was this gynecologist who may have acted inappropriately for years and years and years and no action was taken against him for years and years and years. Um, wh what are your take on what's happening there? Well, it wasn't only that. It was also the previous dean of the medical school and the person they appointed after mm -hmm. him. The previous yeah. dean was doing methamphetamine with students. And so the guy is obviously not really aware of what's going on under his watch. But to me, the more interesting story is the hearings that Jerry Hill, State Senator Jerry Hill, is going to hold in Sacramento on how the medical board can ex investigate this in other doctors. Because you know, if this one gynecologist is doing it, a lot of other doctors must be also. Well, either Nikias was unaware or more uh, problematically, he was aware and tried to sweep it under the rug. Not unlike the Catholic Church, where exactly. they were more concerned with their own reputation and their image than the students. And his constituency is really the students. Or Larry Nasser. But is, yeah. is his constituency the students? His, the people that hire and fire him are the board of trustees. Mm. And right now, they're sticking with them. I understand, yeah. but there's a responsibility that we have to understand. These are young women who probably have never been to a gynecologist. And just think about it, it's invasive. As a woman, as a woman, I can tell you, I don't know, none of us like that. And to be so young and expecting to be treated in a certain manner, not knowing that that was inappropriate, how are you supposed to differential? And then the fact that when he retired, they, they allowed him to get paid. That mm -hmm. makes no sense. It's almost like they rewarded him for his, his wrongdoing, which yeah. was unacceptable in my eyes. Can I make one more quick comment about that? Without the power of the press, in this case, the LA Times, these scandals would not have been known. Mm -hmm. And I don't think anything would have happened. These people would have been quietly asked to resign and paid off. Mm -hmm. And now, finally, there's accountability. So the mainstream media does actually deserve some credit here. And well, yeah. Thank you. We love the that. LA and Times has and, been and, doing and, it. Good job. And let's yeah. also, it'll be interesting to see how he responds because in the past, his strategy PR wise has been basically to try to have this go away, go sort of not talk about it for a while and then come back when things get better or after they win some football games or something. Right. Is that good enough here? I mean, he, he hasn't done any TV interviews. We've invited him to come on here. Absolutely not because I think the people want to really have a voice and hear things. California realized that USC is a major university here, uh, have a major endor endorsers and endowments and they want to know it's what is going on. It's the biggest employer in Los Angeles. Hey, yeah. I'm, tell me about it. Yeah. Well, well, I, I went to USC, so I'm telling me you. Me too. <laughs> I think now that Glory Allred is involved, we're going to see some major action on that. Yeah, uh, and she was here on the issue as last yes, week, she was. Uh, hinting she was. at that as well. Um, another big thing this week, uh, this NFL kneeling policy, which is, raises some interesting legal questions. The NFL players are now saying uh, that, or the NFL owners are saying that you have to uh, stand if you're on the field. You can stay behind in the locker room, uh, but if you do come on the field, you have to stand, and if you kneel, we could penalize you. Mm -hmm. Fine you. Um, what do you make of, of that? Well, I think it's ridiculous. And what's even more ridiculous is they're doing it because of Trump. You know, his audience is the same audience that watches the NFL. And I think they're bowing to pressure from that audience. Trump recently said they should maybe leave the country. So now he's putting him in the same category as he put Mexicans, who are all rapists and criminals, as you know. And um, well, some, I assume, are good people, actually, was the quote. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is one of those racially charged wedge issues that Trump just lunges at as a distraction to fire up his base, which is overwhelmingly white, not surely, but most of his base is overwhelmingly right, uh, right and white. And uh, I think this is shameful. It's possibly unconstitutional. 
and uh, it's a distraction from the important business the country you know, faces. I think you're both wrong. This comes down to money and numbers. We're talking about an athlete that is paid and to run across the field, take a ball, and make millions of dollars. The NFL has been losing money. This has nothing to do with Trump. This has to do with urban communities. They're taking the nail because they know about what's going on with police brutality in the black urban communities. You guys want to relate this to Trump? That is bull crap. This has to do with the fact that we have an issue in this country of police brutality and black people being yes. oppressed. And so and they, they, use this, they use their platform for yes. that. But the ruling of the NFL basically stated also that this falls under the rules guidelines, the rule games guidelines. So when they stand on the field, that's how they got past all the, the lobbyists and everything, making this part of the rule guidelines. But, but, well, the, the, but we, we pivot because the liberal progressives want to continue to ride on the backs of black people. The indigenous slave children who've come and built this country, liberal progressives want to do that. We don't want liberal progressives in black communities are to take advantage of what has gone on in the black community and that has deviated we have deviated and we're making this all about Trump we're not under Hillary Clinton under Obama we had oppression in the black community absolutely well, Hillary well, got I totally agree Hillary with got you he did nothing for African Americans Obama, Obama, Obama did so you, uh, think, so, you think the, so you think so you think Hillary Clinton so you think the 94 so wait you think the 94 percent of African Americans who voted for Barack Obama were stupid that they didn't know who was going to be for they, them he he tricked them he, he tricked them in a, 2012 he is a too? neoliberal corporatist who did not prosecute any of the banksters for proven fraud that they have settled That's hundreds true. of millions of so dollars. So you think 95% of black people cases, were uninformed? They were uninformed. I will tell you, I spoke, to a, I spoke okay. to a Hillary delegate at the DNC in Philadelphia who did not know that Obama quadrupled fracking. Fracking is killing people. It's always Absolutely. a problematic in, argument in to say the voters are stupid. And if only I'm the voters knew what I know. No, yeah. I'm not saying they were stupid. They are uninformed because our media doesn't talk about issues. All right, well, that's why we're on the show, right? It's called The Issue yes, Is. Yes, The Issue All Is. All right, uh, let's talk about the issue for a moment of, of Jerry Brown's legacy. Four-term governor, you are writing a new op-ed um, talking about the fact that his legacy is kind of complicated. You know, uh, maybe when you look, peel back the layers, it's not as good as it's being told. What's your main point, Brian? And, and let's talk about it. Well, from my perspective, the media has given him fawning coverage. The voters have given him very high approval ratings, largely because the economy is good overall. But he's evaded or avoided most of the tough choices and the big issues that the state is really facing, from the highest poverty in America, an affordability crisis, uh, an education crisis. Um, and I think the next recession is really going to show how little was actually done and how much was kicked to his successor. Well, my big issue is climate change, of course. And, you know, he tries to pretend that he's a big climate leader. But as we say when we protest him, as we have been doing for six years, climate leaders don't frack. He refuses to ban fracking, and that's because he's taken $9.8 million from oil and energy companies. Sure. But, but here you have uh, Jerry Brown. Pat Brown will have a better, better legacy and be remembered than Jerry Brown. He is the worst president we've had in California in U.S. history. You mean Governor Brown? Uh, uh, I mean Governor Brown. I'm sorry. Governor Brown is the worst um, governor that we've ever had with Jerry Brown. Look what he's done. We have hepatitis A. We have hypodermic needles. We have homeless people. Yeah, but we, we have also, squatting zones. They give you a map. They give you a map We have a, we have a massive surplus that he that just started. Surplus of what? Uh, Illegal immigration is tragedy. It's a tragedy in the state of California. He, we're having more people come in on top of more people. And you're going to tell me Maybe a governor? Maybe they're coming here yes. because the state's a good place issue, to be. As, as, even, Jerry, as even Jerry Brown has said, even a moderate recession would produce a deficit four times larger than the rainy day fund. So yeah. that surplus is going to be wiped out very quickly. All right. We, we, we're getting kind of contentious at time. Let's have a little bit of fun. These are uh, our personal issue cards. I just chose these randomly. All we right. each get one of them. And uh, we want to learn a little bit more about you. So give us, uh, give us your question and uh, tell us what, what the answer is. The best thing about being a Californian is all the progressives that I um, get to surround myself with in this state. OK. I was going to say in and out Burgers. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> the best university in California uh, is Stanford, my alma mater. I'm, yeah. I'm a little biased on that. So you, you might actually be right with that. <laughs> yeah. That's a big statement that, that, from that, an SC. Well, that's saying something when, you, when uh, yeah, the, the facts may be true on that point. Okay. Oh, my favorite comedian would have to be Eddie Murphy because he's so diversified. I mean, he's an actor, he's a singer, he's a writer. He's just, he, he knows who he is. And yeah. I, I really appreciate a comic. 
Okay, so let's uh, end it with uh, the next big issue is, this is where you tell us uh, what is going to be the big thing uh, ahead, what the big thing we should be paying attention to. Shirley, why don't you start us off? We should be paying off. attention to urban game changers. We're in the urban communities. We're holding people elected accountable. And we have to deal with illegal immigration in California. That's still an issue. The wall is still an issue. We're going to see that President Trump is going to be pushing that issue to make sure that we move forward on that. And pushing the hepatitis A is going to be an issue. And the hypodermic needles, no one is talking about that. That is a nasty thing going on in California. We need to talk more on that. Brian? The next big issue should be pension reform, in my view, because pension and retirement costs have doubled over the uh, pension retirement costs have doubled over the course of the last 10 years, and they're draining our budget. I fear that the next big issue is actually going to be single-payer health care, which to me is a politically driven fantasy because mm. it's going to double the state budget, <laughs> and it will require okay. the approval of President Trump, which ain't going to happen, but I've teed you up personally. Yeah. Perfectly. I'm not, <laughs> yeah. not going to rebut you on single-payer because I want to use my time to talk about what I think the next biggest issue is, which is an impending war. Trump is his own worst enemy. I actually agreed with his tweet that we should get out of Syria, that we should get out of Afghanistan, that we should be having peace talks with North Korea. But then he goes in and puts John Bolton, who is one of the worst neocon war hawks in America, as his national security advisor, and Mike Pompeo as head of CIA. And they are both leading us into a, a World War III. You well, watch. Well, let's what a way to end. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's hope not. Thank you guys very much. Uh, we got a little bit of left, right, and center here today. So yes, that's, uh, that's, that's interesting that's Interesting to hear a lot of different perspectives. And a lot of times, people with these different perspectives don't talk with each other. So it's interesting to hear you all here. And thank you for being We're all pre pretty, pretty, yeah. Pretty, yeah. Pretty, pretty respectful uh, for the most part. Go and thank you guys uh, for listening uh, or watching wherever you are. Um, and uh, we appreciate it. We'll see you next time for more of The Issue Is. Thank you.